Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're having a good day. I wanna talk about spline dynamics today. Now it's a bit of a beginner tutorial, but I'm also gonna give you some tips on managing spline dynamics in your scene. So hopefully this will help you out. We're gonna go ahead and use this um, rope barrier model from our events and venues pack. Here it is right here. It's already rigged up if you buy the pack, but I'm gonna build it from scratch for you guys. Uh, we have a bunch of events and exhibition type packs in our store. If you're interested, make sure to check those out. Um, but right now we're gonna go ahead and make a spline. So we're gonna go to the side view and we're gonna put a spline exactly where we want it between these two poles and then we're gonna hit escape to get out of that spline. So right now we only have two points on our spline at the ends and we're gonna need a lot more subdivision for this to work. So the way to add that is um, by hitting U and then S that will uh, subdivide it once and then we'll do it again, U, S. You can just do that a couple times till we have some more subdivision there. Something like this should work well. All right, so now we need to add our spline dynamics on here and it is under the hair tags. So we'll go to hair tags and then we'll go to spline dynamics. And right now it's just gonna fall down because we have to pin the ends to the model. So the first thing you need to do is find a place to pin it to. And what we've done, and this is a really nice way to do it, is add a null inside of your model and put that null exactly where you want to hook up this spline to. So we have a target on both of these models inside the model, and we're gonna attach these points to it. So let's go back to the spline and go to point mode. We're gonna right click on it and we're gonna go back to hair tags and now we're gonna add a constraint tag. And in your constraint tag, we're going to make sure that we're highlighting the point that we want to constrain. And then we need to go back to that tag and under the object slot, drag that target null. And then we just hit set. And now if we hit play, you can see that we have this point stuck onto that null. So now we need to do the same to this other one. So we'll click on this point. We're going to add another hair tag hair tags constraint and in here we're going to add the other target for the other side of the model and then we'll hit set. You can see that that point turned red that means it's constrained and now we are in business. So this is looking really good. We have uh, our spline dynamic set up and it's attached to the pole so if we actually move the pole around it's uh, stuck on there which is really really awesome. So here is um, a little tip for you guys. First of all, when you start your animation, this line starts at its original point, which is completely uh, straight across, and then it's going to drop down and then bounce for a while. Let's say that we want it to start at this point right here. There's a really handy little button in here called Set Initial. So if you run your simulation, get it to the point where you want it to start and click on Set Initialize. Then if you go back to the beginning, instead of being directly across and you have to wait for the first few seconds, instead of that, now it will start at the point where you want it to. There's gonna be a little bit of a jiggle, but uh, not nearly as much. It's not gonna be like four seconds till you get to the part where you want it. And then the other thing is if we move our pole anywhere, so let's say we move it over to here, and then we hit play, you'll notice that the spline is still in that initial position, and when you hit play, it's gonna snap. So it's gonna kind of uh, snap to that position over the course of the first frame. And that's you know a pretty weird thing to happen, so we need to figure out a way around that. So just like before, that set initial uh, button is gonna save you. So play your, your uh, animation to the point where you want it, Go back to your tag and hit set initial. And now it's going to recognize this as the position that it's gonna start at instead of where it was before you moved that pole. So if you're ever going to move anything in your scene, make sure that you move it, play your simulation for a little bit till it gets all that craziness out of it, and then go and set initial and that will save you a lot of headache. So just a little tip, I'm sure that a lot of you know that already, but if you're just starting out with spline dynamics, that will help you out a lot. So now that we have our spline, all you have to do is add a circle, make that a lot smaller. Go ahead and add a sweep nerves and dump both of those into the sweep nerves. We'll throw the texture on there. And just like that, we have a great uh, rope barrier and it's completely dynamic and it looks fantastic. I hope this helped you out. So thanks for checking out the Pixel Lab. We'll talk to you next time.